Hi, and welcome to the new network, Fueling the Transformation of Business Models, Processes, and Applications. Today, we're hosted by Time Warner Cable Business Class. I'm Michael Kennedy, Principal Analyst, ACG Research, and I'm going to moderate our session today. Uh, our next speaker is uh, David Charney from Stealth Monitoring. Uh, and David, tell us about Stealth Monitoring. Absolutely. Thank you, Michael Kennedy, and thank you for allowing us to uh, participate in this panel. Uh, I think uh, you're about to see here in just a second uh, a video that I'll cover in a second that shows uh, our proactive live video surveillance services in real time. Uh, you'll see a subject, this happens to be a car dealership, and this car dealership you'll see some uh, bad folks uh, get into the car dealership and are attacking live customer cl client vehicles, could be yours. Uh, in a very, very high quality uh, uh, car dealership. Uh, in this case, they tend to uh, find vehicles that are easy targets. In this case, the service vehicles have uh, the keys inside of them. So you'll see that three different subjects are driving these vehicles right out of the service bays, uh, which uh, by any means is scary. We've got police on the way. They're actually surrounding the property right now in, in, in the, at the point in this video uh, and about to take action upon these uh, three individuals. Uh, you'll see here in just a second uh, that the vehicles are getting, uh, doing their best to leave the property and exit uh, the car dealership. And in real time, our folks take action and, and work with law enforcement. At this point in the video, you start to see the law enforcement taking uh, action, showing up to the property, uh, chasing down the individuals and apprehending them. Uh, here in just a few seconds, you'll see uh, they take uh, good caution and, and follow correct protocol to uh, bring these suspects to the floor and uh, prosecute them accordingly. So. Um, you know, with that said, we can transition back to the slides, and uh, I'd just like to give a little more background about our company. My name is David Charney. Uh, uh, I'm the president of the company. We are a national live video surveillance company. Uh, what's unique about our services and our solution offering is we're completely proactive in how we do things. We watch your cameras proactively, which means we specialize in outdoor assets and being able to prevent the crimes as best we can, early as we can in the process. Uh, we've got national clients of many, many uh, different industries. Uh, we specialize in commercial assets, certainly car dealerships, industrial real estate, uh, self-storage facilities, uh, and we have hundreds of clients across the country. Uh, we, we also have a lot of cool technology. Uh, people love getting demos, which uh, we're happy to provide demos for anybody that would like that services. But a big part of where this goes is understanding the history of our industry and what the, the networking components have done to change it. There's a diagram that's being shown now that kind of shows a, a sort of a theoretical version how, how the importance of the cloud and innovation has changed our industry. When camera surveillance came out, it was CCTV. It was just closed captured uh, cameras, and they were locally not being used. Eventually, internet connections came out, and they were usually pretty weak. Over time, IP cameras have gotten much cheaper and in a much more competitive marketplace. So IP cameras have become much more pre prevalent, uh, and people are putting in IP cameras. Now, the bandwidth has to match that, uh, now it has, with uh, much more, more competitive uh, internet connections available nationwide. Now, we have the capability of doing all kinds of things, which we'll t speak about more uh, in, in the future of this uh, conversation. But it's really important that the proactiveness nature that we are able to watch cameras in real time to prevent crimes comes from the fact that our clients and ourselves are able to take advantage of high-speed internet, much more data uh, concentrated back to stealth monitoring, and a much better uh, capability of putting an overall solution together. Whether it's studying the data or the analytics or real-time detection that camera seven somewhere in the United States went down a few minutes ago and that our business folks can take action proactively instead of after the fact when you have an incident or a slip and fall or some sort of event where you need that footage. Uh, the ability for us to get proactive on that is very, very powerful in our industry and it makes us stand out from the rest. Uh, I'm gonna follow that up with uh, a question for David. Uh, so we, we've talked a little bit about what the new network is. Uh, tell me what makes this new network offering so attractive compared to what we did before. David? Sure. Thank you, Michael. Uh, you know, it's one of these things where I think the two words I'm hearing kind of consistently throughout all of us is sort of timely information, right? The, the, the gentlemen on this panel are very powerful in terms of giving you that backbone information and that network infrastructure, and I represent maybe a user base of that as well. Really, in our business, it's about being proactive and seeing things earlier than, than, than traditionally possible. It's also about data. 
Um, you know, the old days of just getting data to a central repository is getting much easier with the cloud and with central storage and with much better connectivity everywhere. But it's also about translating that data into something valuable. We, you know, maybe to transition the cliche of data to information. It's getting it where it, it's usable and tactical and something that's at the right level of granularity uh, is very is very fundamental to all the changes that seem to be going on right now. Uh, in our business, of course, it's being able to see the bad guys and. If it's seeing them a few seconds earlier, it might mean that the police uh, can dispatch, or it might just be a speaker scare off, and it scares them away and saves the, the client money on, on guard expenses or, or, or just damage of their property. So uh, I think it's, it's one of those things, there's overarching themes to that, uh, which is just getting more information in a valuable format earlier in the cycle in order to make decisions and improve your business over time. Uh, your audience, audience is asking, is how are new networking capabilities changing customer expectations and the competitive landscape? Uh, David, you're, you're actually doing that. Uh, you know, how would you answer that question? Sure, thank you. I think that's a great question. Uh, you know, for us, it's about distinguishing ourselves from what else is out there. Uh, you know, the old days of just installing cameras is long gone, and they expect us to do full network uh, connectivity analysis for our clients now. I mean, uh, you can't have a situation where you have a liability or a, a problem with a camera that doesn't show uh, what it's supposed to be recording. The excuse of, I had a car accident in my parking lot or a bad guy broke in and I just have footage after the fact is unacceptable. So it's sort of a two-part thing. One is being able to proactively run and watch the business effectively. And two, it's the networking and data on the backside to service them. So what if I can save 60% of all truck rolls by doing things remotely, by restarting cameras, restarting wireless devices, rebooting things, upgrading firmwares, changing settings? What if I can detect not the old days of a heartbeat monitor, which maybe checks one thing, like the whole system going down, but now checking every single device? When Scott mentions things of Internet, Internet of Things and, and where the network is going, every device we're installing nowadays, it's hundreds of devices per site location. And every one of those devices is being captured into a data set that we look at, analyze, some of which is used in real time to say, hey, we just lost connectivity because your power got uh, struck in, in, in wherever in America. Uh, it could also be such a simple thing as uh, a chunk of cameras went out uh, in the middle of the day, and we detect that and take action to say, hey, did you guys lose power in the back of the building, or did, you know, did somebody change a port setting? Uh, we're able to proactively tell our customers and offer them a service level they've never even dreamed of. They're shocked to find out that we proactively check those kinds of things. So I guess that would be my, my quick answer to that question. High resolution video takes up a huge amount of space and bandwidth. How does that affect a video service provider who's got to receive, process, and manage it? Are client locations typically set up to send that volume of data back to the provider? Um, David, that might be a good one for you. Sure. Uh, you know, it's a, it's a question I could spend 30 minutes explaining, uh, maybe my best answer to, but I'll try to give you a short version of that. Um, to answer the first part of the question, yes, video does take a ton of space and bandwidth. Uh, just to give you some metrics, uh, a given 1.3 megapixel uh, IP camera can produce up to 10 megabits per second worth of video content. Um, when we have average client installs with, you know, anywhere from 30 to hundreds of cameras, you can imagine they can't even order an internet connection at that point that could uh, essentially stream all of that in real time at the full quality. So you get into all kinds of discussions, and I don't want to nerd out here about compression and, and algorithms and, and, and the video analytics that play a part, but for our specific clients to answer the, maybe the first and the second question together, our clients are getting a decent internet connection, which upload speed is actually the most critical. Um, bare minimum might be 1.5. We have some clients as, as high as 10 megabit upload speeds. Uh, very relevant for them to get it back to us. However, it's recording locally on an NVR very, very high qualities within the network. And then it's sending it through the WAN back to our headquarters uh, to be monitored in real time. So what's really important about that is, is not just thinking of it as raw data. While some of the backbone infra infrastructure type discussions you need to for throughputs and things, from our business side, we use a lot of video analytic engines that help us detect what kind of motion should we be sending back to be watched. And that makes us unique, and that helps us not have to send every bit of motion. If there's a Windows 7 screensaver that's going like this all night, we don't have to be staring at that. So that can be recording locally, or we could even mask such a thing. So a big part of it is making smart decisions on how to handle that kind of information. And in this case, we send a compressed version back to be monitored. 
And if it's something that we are getting really excited about and it's a juicy situation with criminal intent, then we might stream it at a much higher quality. So uh, hopefully that helps give you an answer. The end users need anywhere from 1.5 to 10 megabits, and we're usually stocking uh, anywhere from 12 to 24 terabytes uh, in NVRs for our client side. What comes back here is a smaller version of that. Just reemphasize, they really put some space between themselves and the competition by using things like internet video, cloud technology, and uh, big data.